Brian Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And I've never taken a ship to dry dock on a day it didn't pour rain. Today is July 24th, and the Battleship New Jersey crew has been invited up to Staten Island at Cadell's Dry Dock, where we are dry docking the Destroyer Escort Slater, a World War II era destroyer escort of similar vintage to Battleship New Jersey. As you can see, the tugboats are coming in place to start moving us into the floating dry dock. At this point, a pair of tugboats have backed Slater stern first into the floating dry dock. Earlier this morning, floating dry dock had its wing walls, which are the two sides on either side of the ship, flooded, which lowered it into the dry dock. Prior to that, the actual wooden blocking that the ship will sit down on, as designed in our docking plan back in the 1940s, had been put in place. So now the ship is being maneuvered via the tugboats pushing our nose and men handling lines on the sides so that she will sit directly over the blocking. The driver will go in the water to make sure that that is correct. And now the water inside of the wing wall tanks will be pumped out, causing the dry dock to become buoyant and raising her with Slater on board high and dry. So as you can see, the dry dock has been nearly completely pumped out at this point. So the dry dock has now been pumped completely dry. You can see Slater is sitting high and dry on the blocks for the first time in six years. In 2014, uh, she was brought right here into dry dock specifically to do some maintenance on the underwater hull and also to add a doubler plate along the wind water line around the entire width of the ship. So we'll see that as we go. Uh, you can notice above the doubler plate there's a little bit of pitting, but the doubler plate itself is in good shape. Uh, and you can see there isn't a whole heck of a lot of growth on the hull of the ship. And as you scrape it away, you can see the red coating under it. She's in really good shape. Now this time she's in dry dock specifically to get work done on her mast. But because they raised the money, to tow the boat 24 hours down the river here, uh, they decided to dry dock her again. Work crews behind us are currently setting up to pressure wash the whole of the ship. That'll get all the growth off. And then they'll be able to see what condition the coatings underneath are in. Uh, and then they will reapply coatings based on that. Walk out and see some more features of this ship out of the water. This area where there's a gap in the blocking is where the ship's sonar dome is located. All of the underwater detection equipment projects through the hull here. Above us is the ship's port side bilge keel. She has one of these on each side. And above me right here, you might be able to see some round circles projecting from the hull. Those are sea chests, which have been blanked over with steel plates. Normally these would be taking water in or forcing water out, uh, mainly stuff having to do with the engineering equipment. 
and since not all of the ship's power plant runs anymore, these are blanked over so that they won't let water in. You can also seal, see the keel blocks that are set up in place here for the ship to dock in. Uh, these were made according to the ship's original docking plan, and they were put into position in the dry dock prior to the ship being brought in. So that when the dry dock sank and the ship was brought in, they were already here, ready for her to sit down on. Above me here, you can see a sea chest that hasn't been blanked over. You might be able to notice that it is graded so that it's not going to suck in too much in addition to the seawater. This one is for cooling one of the ship's diesel propulsion motors. She has six diesel generators, two of them still run. Uh, I believe this is the only sea chest that is still open. And you can also see this square protrusion right here. There are a series of those all the way down the hall. Those are sacrificial zinc anodes, which uh, if any stray electrical current gets into the hull of the ship, it would cause ferrous metals, the steel that the ship is made out of, to corrode quickly. First the paint will pop off, and then uh, the metal will corrode. Well, zinc sacrifices itself for steel. So these zinc anodes are here to deteriorate instead of the steel. You'll see that over the last six years, the zinc anode has not uh, lost its shape at all, which uh, I, I suspect once the hole has been pressure blasted, we're able to see this without marine growth on it, we'll see that it hasn't corroded at all, nor have the coatings underneath. That's a really good sign for a ship like this. Yes, she's getting into dry dock every six years right now, but 10 to 20 years in between dry docking is more likely in the future. So seeing that the sacrificial anodes and the coatings are holding up uh, remarkably well, bodes well. Moving after they're gonna keep uh, yeah. knocking that ship's propellers and rudders. Destroyer escorts like Slater have two of each. Uh, and you can see me for scale, I'm approximately six feet tall. These are three-bladed propellers. They're not really designed for speed, they're designed for endurance. The rudders are completely watertight. There's a drain plug right here, which you can open to inspect the inside, make sure that it's still full of air. You'll notice that there are way more zincs built into the hole back here. That's primarily because these propellers are made out of manganese bronze. The steel of the propeller shaft would sacrifice itself and corrode in place of the bronze. But covering all of this stuff with zinc anodes means that the zinc sacrifices itself for the steel for the bronze instead of losing the ship's propeller shafts. So, here you can see everything that's kind of black is permanently below water. Here's your water line, 
So then you see there's the brown coloring on either side of that. That's your wind water line where waves are hitting. If the ship is completely submerged, that's great for long-term preservation. If the ship is completely dry, that's great for long-term preservation. If it's constantly getting wet and drying off, that is bad for your historic vessel. So you'll notice uh, six years ago in 2014, the reason that they brought Slater into dry dock was to weld this doubler plate on. They call this their ice belt. Because the ship is in Albany, New York, uh, ice will form, and they were worried that it was going to punch through their 3 8 thick hull. And up here you can see that it is pretty well perforated just from years and years of being the wind water line. Luckily, as a museum ship, she sits a little higher in the water, so the wind water line moves down. Anyway, this doubler plate is not only going to increase the strength of the hull here, but it'll keep things that wash down the river from punching through. So once a ship comes out of dry dock and is sitting high and dry, or comes into dry dock and is sitting high and dry, the first thing you want to do is pressure wash off all of the growth. Uh, in the past, often you would use grit to take this down to bare metal, but nowadays you can use things like uh, water at something like 80,000 PSI to spray down, and that'll take off any paint that's going to come off, and it'll take off any growth, and it's able to contain all of your media that you've sprayed, so you're, you're not sending all sorts of grit into the river. You do this when the ship is still wet, uh, and all the growth on the side of the ship comes off fairly easy. Here you can see some growth, and here you can see some of what uh, has been sprayed. And unfortunately, Slater came out of the water afternoon on a Friday. Uh, so, the stuff that they weren't able to grab in the hour or an hour and a half that they did spray is going to solidify and be an unholy pain to spray off later. Here we are back at the sonar dome, and you can see the spray has taken off some of the paint down to bare metal. The plan is to hit this with primer, spray the whole hull, and then hit it with three coats of epoxy. That's what was done back in 2014. And as you can see, by and large, these coatings have held up really, really well. Um, there is the potential this time that to save money, they won't put that many coatings on because she just doesn't need it. A ship like this tends to stay out of the water for about seven or eight days, weather dependent. Usually takes a day to spray her, uh, Fully, so one day to take the coating off and then another day for each of the coats. And then of course you've got your weekend days. Um, if there's gonna be hot work done, that's gonna add some time before you apply new coats. Um, and that will reveal itself while you're pressure washing. With that high PSI water, you might punch holes in the boat. She's only 3 eighths of an inch thick in most places here on the shell plating. Uh, and she's built in 1943-ish, so we're looking at a uh, ship that's coming up on 80 years old. There could be corrosion, there could be through holes. That's fairly easy to patch in a yard. But it adds a little bit of time. Once coatings have been applied to the entire hull of the ship, well then you've got to do what's called fleeting her. Where these keel blocks are, you can't spray the marine growth under there and you can't add new paint. So were we to just put Slater back in the water at this point, there would be parts of the ship that haven't had any work done on them. So what has to happen is you reflood the dry dock, or in this case, sink the floating dry dock, move the ship a couple of feet, re-block her using a different blocking plan, uh, and then you can access the areas under the keel blocks and spray off the growth there and then put your four layers of, of coatings down. That's another thing that causes this project to last several days. So now that they've pressure washed off this zinc, you can see it's still all perforated. It looks like it's still got growth on it. It isn't. This is bare metal at this point, uh, but you can see how it has been eaten away, sacrificing itself for the steel. Look how well preserved these coatings around it are. Thanks for watching today. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to get notified when we put out more content. If you have any questions, drop them in the description below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. And please, if you can, 
Check the description below for ways to support our museum, Battleship New Jersey, and also Slater's Museum, which was able to fund this entire dry docking project largely through personal donations from viewers like you.